Good day and welcome to this Business Access TV special where we're dealing with logistics. And we have two special guests for you today. But first, let me introduce uh, Edmund Marsh. And he is the Vice President of uh, Business Development and Special Projects with the Port Authority of Jamaica. Welcome, Mr. Marsh. Thank you very much, Garth, for having me on our program. Good, glad to have you as well. Now, the role of the Port Authority will become increasingly important as we take a step closer, or every step taken closer toward becoming a logistics-centered economy. Uh, just describe uh, what the Port Authority will be doing as we move forward or enhancing our way forward to, to, to that goal? Okay, the Port Authority has several roles to play. First, it's the maritime, it's the responsible for the development of the maritime industry. And therefore, over the years, we have done significant work towards building a world-class port at the Kingston Continent Terminal. And we also look at regulating the, the harbors and services that provided to the ports. However, regarding logistics, um, the port of Kingston is a very busy port. It handles, the sea, I think, in a region of 1.4, 1.5 million TUs, 20-foot equivalent container boxes. Think of container boxes. And uh, the Port Authority handles maybe 90% of that cargo. With the advent of the concession, imminent concession with the same ECGM, we're now looking to change our role a little bit, more from the direct day-to-day -day operations of that port into one more of management of the facility, of overall management of the port industry. Right. The, the role now centers around how can we improve the cargo flow from Jamaica in and out, and that's where logistics comes in. The port therefore acts as a node for cargo moving across boundaries, and as a transshipment port, Currently, a lot of what we do relates to moving boxes. However, with the advent of and the thrust of logistics, trying to leverage our central position in the region and volumes that already come to Kingston, we're looking to open those boxes and move them internally to the island or around the port for further development. Right, which is um, a, a part of, of, of the whole process because uh, there, there, are, there are particular activities or companies which may wish for us to finish products here and so on, and that's where it comes, in, that's where it comes in handy. That is, that is what we're now looking. In fact, we have recently got interest from some of the, the users of the port from overseas to look and say, can we put facilities here that will help to transform that cargo into value-added, through value-added processing towards final destination within the region. So that's something that we're working with them to accomplish. And that's what the, the whole logistics hub initiative idea is all about. Um, for a lot of people, they think it's really, when you, they think of the word hub, they think of one, one small spot. But really, it's, it's the island kind of positioning itself. Absolutely, yeah? absolutely. And that is the, the whole concept behind having, first of all, very good quality infrastructure. And that is that ports, airports, then they have to move cargo from there in and out in a very efficient, and very, in a, in a clear way, with strong security, mm -hmm. that means the goods can be tracked and traced, and therefore wherever it's, it's then used, the final destination for it to be processed and returned to the port for an onward destination, all of this part of logistics. We, at the Port Authority, we're looking to use for those clients who would want to be close to the port, we have facilities which are now preparing for that purpose. Already, the free zones are there, we have the Kingston Free Zone that actually was set up to the exact of that many years ago. Over the years, this role has been transformed from, from that purpose into other things. But no, that's what we're focusing on. Utilizing those facilities to continue the whole process of value added, close proximity to the port, leverage the volumes already there, and to satisfy clients' demand. But now, as it relates to Kingston Container Terminal, the concession agreement with uh, CJCGM, um, what's the, what led to that and uh, what's the great advantage of, of <laughs> kind of stepping away from the day-to-day -day management? All right, the CMA CGM we're, we're very, is one of our major clients that actually calls the port. A few years ago, they actually submitted a proposal to, for certain, the use exclusive of certain aspects of the port. However, the government decided to put the whole terminal facilities out to private tender. In the end, the process that has gone on for a little while, same CGM, through their consortium with a, with a section that deals with global terminal operations, have won that concession. And we're in the final bits of 
finalize and transfer a process over to for them to literally hand over the keys for them to operate the port. Now, is that just operating? Oh, what's the timeline on that, by the way? Um, financial close the schedule for sometime, I think, end of March. Mm -hmm. and, so occupy, and so the transfer should occur pretty soon after. What led to that decision? Over the years, you have to understand that the Kingston Container Terminal was an initiative of, of the government, and the Port Authority was established to perform that particular role. And we have done all the investments. Of it. If you look across, all that build-out has been done primarily through loans, and the Port Authority has gone ahead and did it, and supported it, operated it through third-party um, players, and we have reached a point where, with certain challenges, we now think that for us to move on to that next level, we need a lot more input from the private sector. And that led to the idea of, um, of inviting international terminal operators to come in and let's hear what they have to say in terms of building up the facilities over the next 30 years. And that's what led to the development of, of that concession and their charge responsibility for leaving the port, modernizing it, adding new equipment, and operate it to world-class levels and to optimize the capacity of that facility. Good. Now, there is a near port logistics project which is underway, um, but describe that project and how it will enhance our overall uh, preparedness. If you look around to most of the major ports, and transshipment ports, for example, they have evolved to move away from just moving containers and have become literally industrial park logistic centers where the, the idea of transforming the cargo into higher value is, 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 has become a part of a port operation. So that's what we're looking at. And we have our, our, approximately 80 acres, 80 hectares across behind the port mm -hmm. and nearby that we think would be eminently suitable for that purpose. Good. Uh, and the timeline on the project? We have been going through the process for a little while, but we're happy to say that we're at a point where we have some very keen interest. And over the next few months, we should be able to, to share a little bit more with the public on that. Good. Well, exciting times are ahead. Uh, and I know less hours of sleep for you probably are, <laughs> is also we're on the agenda. Good. Uh, but certainly here at Business Access TV, we're going to keep, keep in touch with the Port Authority because we're going to keep abreast of all the activities. And we're happy to, to share with you as we move ahead. There are other developments which we're looking at, looking at modernizing all the ports, the cruise, cruise ports, ensuring that we have adequate capacity to handle a never port, two ships at the same time. We're looking at the LNG development in Montego Bay. Yeah. We're involved with that process through the agreement with, with New Fortress. They have leased facilities on our lands, and we're looking to modernize that port as well. So very exciting times indeed. Well, thank you very much for, for joining us, Mr. Marsh, and we look forward to keeping abreast of all the action and all the activities, actually, with uh, the Port Authority of Jamaica. It has been a pleasure talking to you. Good. On this BATV special, we're going to continue our focus on logistics, and when we return from these messages, we'll have Professor Peter Kwok from Singapore with us. With me now is a professor of logistics, and he is Peter Kwok. He hails from Singapore, and he's a, a professor at the Peking University in China. Uh, ni hao. Ni hao. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to have you here with us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you now, for um, inviting. Be before we start talking about your, yes. your work in logistics, yes. let's talk a little bit about your career. Uh, yes. Because you would have seen Singapore grow pre-independence and become an independent nation, and now, of course, uh, a very strong economic force um, in the globe. Uh, just describe uh, life in Singapore, which Lovely. led you to, into logistics. Thank you. Well, as you can see, you know, Singapore has something in common. Uh, the founder member you know, of Singapore is Sir Stamper Raffles. Incidentally, Raffles was born in Jamaica. Oh. Moran Bay. Our, our service is his father and he, he was an employee of a uh, British trading company called East India Company. Yes. So 1819, he founded Singapore. He established the port 
he know this is a good port, which is as deep as Kingston Harbor. Yes. So they say, let this be a free port. Let every vessel come in. So Singapore since then started because of the, the uh, position in the east and west, where the Indian businessmen just sail in through monsoon and unload the, and go back in the next monsoon. Mm -hmm. Jamaica had the same. Right. Why? Because when Panama Canal uh, came out, she coming in to Jamaica, uh, to, to Caribbean, you know, Kingston is the first to receive it. Yes. So Singapore started. My family brought to there was uh, running the bus company. So I switched over. It's quite natural, in line with the government, you know, long term move. So I went into the logistic. Uh, I was uh, in United States for many, many years negotiated quite a lot of logistic project for Singapore. Right. At the same time, established the logistic faith phone company in Los Angeles. That is the key point. Working in the towards her. But I feel that you know that experience you know give me a lot of hiccup. Right. Thank you. <laughs> now, <laughs> with Jamaica having so much in common with Singapore, certainly yes. in terms of positioning, and yes. the you made mention of the depth of the Kingston Harbor being yes. similar to, to, yes. to that back yes. home, um, can Jamaica then position itself to be as strong a player in logistics as Singapore I is in this region? I think very natural. The total landmass of Singapore is almost equal to the size of Kingston metropolitan area. Wow. We got independent, you know, two to three years after you. 50 years, you know, yeah. scrapped from nothing up to today. The port in Singapore having 33.55 million TEU. It's a fantastic growth. And yet we are going further. Yes. By 2025, 20, 2027, 20, some of the port will be moving you know, to a certain area land view. It's called Toa and Jurong Port, you know. mm -hmm. and we expect to grow until 65,000 million. So Jamaica will be able to do it, provided, provided think too carefully what do you want to do. If Singapore can, Jamaica can. Well, and part of your, part of, I, I strongly believe that. Um, part of the reason for your visit here to Jamaica, though, yes. is to provide a certain amount of, of consult, uh, consultancy um, as it relates to logistics. Yes. Um, based on what you already know of Jamaica, um, yes. how prepared uh, is Jamaica uh, to really start taking some serious steps towards improving its, 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 uh, its strength, its potency okay. as a player in uh, Western logistics? Okay, since I arrived in Jamaica, uh, Kingston, I've been you know, working throughout these few days. I've seen, seen a little bit here. I went to the Kingston Wharf. I came to the KCP terminal. I went out, you know, see, at the, at the same time, seeing quite a lot. I, I should say, you know, if everything in play, mm -hmm. no matter what business model you are taking, private, public, private partnership, you know, it's going to be here. But to come up with logistic hub is a monumental task, yeah. monumental task. And, and because of the size of the task too, it, it really comes with a, a big price tag. There yes. is a lot of capital needs to be, yes, needs to be put in place. Um, in, in your opinion, um, are, are there enough players interested, uh, certainly owners of capital, whether it be private business uh, or otherwise, um, willing to, to invest in a Jamaican logistics hub initiative? I should say this way, you know, frankly. How ready, how are you prepared? First of all, those international players, those big, you know, they are very sharp. They want to find out, you know, what will be the future for me. Mm -hmm. All right. Whatever money dump in, what return of investment, investment can I get it? Yeah. At the same time, you know, what Jamaican government can give them? Is that enough volume? for them to do, is that industri in in industrial base to support this move. It's a big job here. So economy must be in play, inform the people, know what's going on, get people to prepare in yeah. terms of logistic knowledge. Yes. I have an opportunity to visit Dr. Fritz Pinot, uh, the Caribbean Maritime Institute. Yes. I met with all the professor, faculty members here. One of the questions I asked, you know, 
how do you know? You know, what to teach to give it to your student? How prepared are you for the job skill? So when the student get out, you know, just can do it. Perhaps I think that's all the paper, you know. Caribbean Maritime Institute should be upgraded to university. Yes. You get a state of, you get a state of the world, you prepare, you stand up for high level. Education is long term process. When the port is ready, while your people cannot take over the job, the player comes in, hey, you are not ready. I cannot get all the people outside to help you. So you gotta help yourself. Yes. You gotta help yourself. You gotta prove that, you know. I can do it. You can prove that I can take over the new technology. The curriculum must be gel with whatever future skill required. And that is the kind of approach that Singapore took? So, yes, yeah. we have been putting in, we get in. Edward Marsh was educated at Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech, we brought them to Singapore University called National University of Singapore. Yeah. And you know, it's the joint certification program. My you, you know, we get the manpower training even to our inmate. We get our inmate to learn logistics. In the prison, yeah. they learn when they get down, you know, provider, you're okay, then they can get it. Job, yes. Can you imagine how important is uh, HR, human resource, human preparedness, you know, to do that. Indeed. I think Jamaica has some job to do. Government agency involved should think seriously about elevate uh, the level awareness or logistic for Jamaica. This is something for them to go. This is something, it's future in thing. This is something had to think seriously before building. I know C CMA bought over, all right, have the 30 year you know, Please, concession yeah. for the port. Right. Incidentally, second coincidence, CMA just bought over our national shipping line. It's called Neptune Orient in, in Line. Singapore? Yeah. Yes, they are very familiar. They are the big player, they are the expert. But can your people cope up when they come in here? Well, we're going to continue that. Yeah, will the volume increase? Are you ready? Yes. So don't ask people, what can you do for me? You've got to prepare yourself to get readiness. Indeed. If you are not ready, these people, you know, will be, you know, set back. So the decision process will be low. After 30 years, you, know, you see a little progress. Certain target had to be set. Certain objective had to be met. You may have to, first of all, redesign your strategy. All right? Realign your goal and also revitalize your growth. Very spirited discussion here uh, with Professor of uh, Logistics at the Peking University, Professor Peter Kwok. We're going to take a quick break and we'll come back with more in this BATV special focusing on logistics. <laughs> Uh, now, Professor Kwok, yes. um, Jamaica has moved up seven places on the last Doing Business report. Yes. Uh, but one of the things in that report um, talks about our bureaucracy still getting in the way of you know, business creation, investment, and so on. You have the ears of the government. You have the ears of a number of uh, strong players uh, in our economy. Mm. Uh, what would your recommendation be? Some of the very next steps we should take to keep edging up that, that ranking, that business ranking. Yeah. For that business ranking is worldwide and world uh, recognition. Some of the areas you may not hit because the mark involved, just a very few percentage, 0 0.3, you are out on the place. It's not much meaning. If you feel that doing business, if you feel that bureaucracy is the main thing in, you know, for you, put it in. Bureaucracy means, first of all, do away pro business regime. Do away whatever bureaucracy procedure. Can you, you know, shorten your approval procedure? Can you, what sort of ease of business for business to come in here? One day they apply IT. Give example, you know, a company want to invest a registration process. If your IT platform is ready, his registration, so the capital he input, his tax, you know, whatever information could be there. Straight away, you know, you evaluate first. When they come in here, approval is there. Therefore, platform had to be built. Give 
example of, of Singapore experience. We engage, you know, DP International. This DP International signed a contract with government of Singapore. They have the data for all the small and medium-sized enterprise, SMEs. They even know who they are. They get the data from our taxation. They get the data of registry of company. They get the data from law. They get the data from custom. So when the businessman come to apply straight away, data are there. Right. They are authorized by government of Singapore. They sign the secrecy act with government. They are dedicated people to do it. So this straight away, you know, chop down your process to three days into one day platform. Yeah. So IT is an in thing to go for logistic three things. You're moving the physical good, right. All right? For physical good flow. Second thing, information flow. Third thing is a monetary flow. Mm -hmm. So therefore, a logistic hub must have a supporting services, modern support such as finance, such as insurance, such as loan guarantee. Right. Such an evaluation all sort had to be gelled together. I was talking to the Kingston Port, you know, I think they need to build up here. They need to get the data from the custom, because custom decoration, this data had to be shared. Data random, classify the data into information. Information put in become knowledge economy, had to be shared, provided given the right access. So somebody, I think, had to champion this. For the port, they have an IT department to do it. Right. For government, you yeah. should have a government in correlate. There's no quarrel between, you know, data belong to me. All right? The custodian of data is responsible. The user responsibility is to update this data all the time. Real data, useful data, without further clarification, I use it. If, as I said, for Singapore, Singapore case, you know, I rely you know, on third party provider. Can you imagine this data can be very deprecating for government? Mm -hmm. All right. You really get somebody, you know, not, even own, not even company to do it, but we have a certain measure. We have certain safeguard. We have a safety measure put in here. As a matter of fact, you know, DP International can even know the 95% of this company that deal with the bank. His credit rating, everything he knows. They can even predict, you know, help us, you know, get into our registry, get into our tax department. Even tell you, you know, this company now, you know, for the trend of the performance for the next 18, 24 months, the probability of breaking the contract. Which helps you to plan better. Yes. You need, you need data to make your decision. Yeah. Now, the other question I have for you is on the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Yes. Now, that, of course, was signed in secret. Um, and that has a lot of con you know, people concerned all over the place. But yes. um, we're not going to get into that side of it. Yes. Just your opinion on how it will impact trade in the Western side, in the Western Hemisphere. By the way, to give you information, Singapore is one of the... Right. All right. Uh, Signees on that one. Yes, signee on the Trans TPP, we right. call TPP, it Trans right. uh, Pacific in you know, a partnership here. Look at here, China, you have 13, you know, 1.37 billion. All right, India, 1.23. Yeah. ASEAN, all right, A, ASEAN, you know, this country had 0.6, you know. Half of the population originated from Europe. They are coming. Manufacturing to 4.0 coming up. A lot of data, you know, a lot of product will be coming to this way. Caribbean island is a right spot. Yeah. You, we can put in showcase here, transit to the west and east coast of America. You got a chance to do that. It definitely benefit you. There's no question about that. Right. Again here, you know, you have to get yourself ready. Get the staging point. Get the logistics hub ready in place. You know so that people come over, showcase them, or even the storage. Right. Or as a temporary, you know, showcase. Dubai, look at here, people go there to shop. All the world convert into the area and divert into area. Business is there. 
These are the opportunity I could see your businessman, you know, in, in Jamaica can think about, we were thinking about here. Think globally. Think, you know, yes, globally. Good. Right. Pleasure speaking with you. Thank you.